Okay, for you workhorse Winnebago Allison transmission owners, uh, this video will be for you. Uh, or even if you're not having troubles now, put this in your memory bank. A uh, buddy of mine I met down at Tropical Palms, his name's George. He's been having some trouble over the last week or so with his RV. And we've been talking and we finally, well, he finally got it figured out and fixed. And I wanted to relay the story to you in case you have the same problem. Uh, if you ever get a transmission failure light like that one on your dash cluster of your Winnebago, you're not going to like it. And then also, if you get this range inhibit, that's another another issue. Uh, for him, it was kind of intermittent. I think the first time it took place, he pulled into a rest area, turned off the key for the night, went to leave the next day, and started up and it wouldn't move and this light came I think maybe only this light came on the transmission failure light and he would try to put it in gear and it wouldn't it was like it would go in gear but like wouldn't move itself out of its own tracks you could tell it was going in gear like it was stuck in third gear and you know just just had no power to pull itself out um, after sitting there I think he reached out to somebody on the internet and he came across can't come to this down. He, he came across some instructions and I'll I'll post these in the below, below the video, but here's some instructions he was given, and he he performed this process, turned the key off, and did the gas pedal to the floor, waited five minutes. When he did that process, lo and behold, it started, and he drove away. Uh, until a day or so later, he stopped again, and it happened a second time. Uh, he couldn't get it to move. I can't remember. This happened a couple of times. Um, he uh, finally got into a repair shop, uh, an Allison repair shop, and they did some troubleshooting. Turned out the, the intermittent problem he was having with the transmission was due to a quick disconnect the previous owner had added to the engine starting battery. Uh, he had one of those like little knife switches or you know, they got different style where you can quickly disconnect the battery. He probably did that because he had a current draw at some point in time. Well, that was the weak point. Evidently, that little switch was losing ground momentarily. That was freaking the transmission out. So that's one thing to be aware of. Grounds are so important. Not even the gr grounds, but also on the other end, our positive cable. So if you have any kind of weird transmission problems, any kind of flickering lights, any kind of thing strange like that, um, be sure to check your grounds, not just at the battery cable itself or the, at the battery post, but more importantly, the ground cable where it goes down to the frame. That's where it'll usually get you with that, uh, that cable goes up underneath the frame where all the rust and stuff is. Um, another thing to do is just like a, a reboot. I've been reading some problems where people have a lot of them on the Allison transmissions. You can just pull the battery cable, the engine starter battery cable, let it sit for five minutes, put the cable back on, and that sort of resets the computer and may, everything may be okay. But I did come across a couple of uh, uh, good articles. Let me show you here, get this picture minimized. Where was that here? And I'll put links to these articles I thought was really good. Um, this is an article talking about the inhibiting gear ranges or shifts, that error message you get, and kind of describes what can happen, you know, because we got these speed sensors that's on the transmission. And um, it, it, it's amazing how much what the monitoring goes in for the transmission, even the engine, uh, the manifold absolute pressure, throttle position sensor, crank crankshaft position sensor, camshaft position sensor, all those sensors, engine and transmissions tie together. Um, also, if you're idling too high, if the engine's idling too fast, try to put it in gear, it won't move. I guess it's protecting itself, so don't slam into gear too fast. Um, if the transmission oil is too cold, a lot of interesting things I read in this article, so I'll put a link to it. And another thing I did while I was here, I saved it on, onto my computer because I didn't want in case this document, case this article ever got lost on the internet in the future. So um, that's a tip for you if you need to um, print something like this. Um, I do this all the time. You go like file and then print. And if you have like a, a program, like I use Foxit Reader PDF printer. Now this is an older version, Foxit Reader. They, you can buy different PDF printer programs. So you print it and you can generate a PDF of it. So that's what I've done. So now i got a PDF file. Here it is. Here's my PDF file of that article. So I've saved it to my desktop. So if I need to refer to it in the future, 
I've got it. That's a handy little, little thing to have. But that was a great article, I thought. And also, there's another problem, child, is they call it the NSBU switch. And you'll see these on our Allison 1000 transmissions, 5-speed, and I guess also on the 6-speed. You'll see these on the driver's side of the, of the transmission. I think there's two different styles. One's got two connector if you're 2004 or later, or the um, 2005. Is they, I think they changed them at that point, made a um, one connector on them. And that can sometimes give a, a problem due to corrosion and water and stuff, maybe getting into the switch or if uh, there's any oil residue or anything. So if you're in a pinch, look under there, see what that switch looks like. That's something uh, you could change your, yourself. Um, and there's one more other thing I would suggest if you can, if you got the money to spare, is to pick you up a Tech 2. Let me, let me pull that up here. So a little self-promotion, if you go to my YouTube channel and click on Playlist, you'll see a couple of videos here under, where is it at? The GM Tech 2, here it is. This is a very powerful tool. Let me see, I think that's a bigger shot of it here. You can see what it looks like. Hang on. Okay, here it is. I found my video. I have to mute the sound on it. But this is the GM Tech 2. Now with this, this will pull up all the good codes that you need access to, to the engine and also the transmission. So that can be a very powerful tool for you. And under this one here, about how to perform a fuel injector balance test, you can click on this link right here under the description and it'll take you to this web page. And you can buy them here. Look like they're like $221. I believe you have to choose the GM soft. No, maybe the, oh, I think it's the GM software. I'm pretty sure that's it. And that will get you the workhorse information that you need. Look, your little chat box pops open. You can ask them, confirm you just want to get the one that has the um, the workhorse information. And you might see somewhere there's an option of something called the candy device. Uh, we don't need it. Where'd it go? That's this little thing here. That's a little extra. That's for the newer vehicles. You need that. But for our older workhorses, it's not needed. It works fine without it. But that's one powerful tool to have at your disposal. I mean, like, I don't keep it hooked up all the time, but I keep it uh, in, in a little briefcase. And if I ever need it, I got it in the back closet. I can pull it out. And even if you're not mechan mechanically minded, if you're in a pinch and you've got this tool, a local mechanic can use it and pull the codes and stuff for you. Because maybe not everybody's got one of these older tech tools that will uh, pull the data out that we need. Because a lot of, I've spent like $200 on scanners, like the most expensive scanner I could buy at Harbor Freight, and it will not pull up the data we need. Uh, this gives you live engine data. Uh, if you have a misfire on a coil, anything like that, you can watch it as the engine is running. Very powerful tool to have. Now, as I was cruising around doing some research on this house and transmission, I came across this other article, and I'll also put a link to it. Um, the, and it talks about that NSBU switch and how... Some of the symptoms you'll see if it gives you trouble and how easy it is to replace and even tells you some of the codes you may see if it starts to fail. Uh, so uh, I'll link that also. You can see the picture of that little switch right there. So I guess in conclusion, if, you, if you're stuck right now in your transmission, you can't go anywhere, I guess the first thing I would suggest is uh, check your battery cables, make sure they're all tight. Of course, Remove the ground cable on the engine starting battery. Make sure it's the engine starting battery, not the house batteries. But on the engine starting battery, let it sit for five minutes. Hopefully, it'll clear all the codes, reset the transmission. Maybe you get lucky, you can get off and, and drive away. Um, or take a peek under the transmission. Look at that uh, sh that uh, picture I showed you a while ago. Where did, where did it go here on that uh, shift thing? Yep, here's a picture of it on the, mounted on the side of the transmission. Uh, take a look at that. Look at these connectors. Make sure they look good. There's no oil or anything on them. No, no loose wires. So, you know, maybe there's something visual you might be able to see and be obvious that you can get yourself out of a bind, get yourself back on the road. And I also would suggest taking the time to read this article here. And there might be some more articles here on this website because it's called GearsMagazine.com. Maybe go in here and do a search on Allison, see what other articles they have. There may be some other good stuff. That would be good because this really gives a lot of insight of how it works, what all's involved. So uh, help you out a little bit in your troubleshooting. Anyways, I guess that'll do it. I thank you guys for watching. You have a blessed day. See you bye.